<clears throat> thought this kind of content was supposed to go on a different <laughs> kind of website. On your OnlyFans? On my OnlyFans. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> this is a fantastic modification if you have a wife or girlfriend that you want to come keeping with you. <laughs> and you never been clearer. Come on, ladies. We have filming to do. If you guys are going to keep me being characters, I'm going to start filming all. What's up, Light Right Nation? What's hey, up, Light Right Nation? So, <laughs> EJS prep is well underway. Chris has got feeds in here. He's been filming some stuff. Yeah. Little choppy choppy. And are yeah, you putting, we're, you're we're putting other tires? tires? We're gonna be, yes, we will be putting other tires on there, but that's later. Beck has a full, not a full LJ to pick. What, what are you bringing to EJS, Beck? Just a rolling chassis. A rolling chassis. The whole thing. All powder coated and pretty. And, and then we've got the demon child to work on, which is right outside the door. And Chris and I need to go down to American Adventure Lab to go pick up some parts because the demon does not have a way to fill up the 40 inch nittos. They it, deflate really fast. That's true, but I cannot not air them up. Back up yet. And you're like, hey Kevin, you have air lockers. How do you not have a way to fill them up? America's Most Wanted put in just a locker kit from- And it's like this big. <laughs> yeah. The pump is like this big. It's just so it still it's works super slow. Yeah, so, well, it so just so works just, for lockers. Just for lockers. It's, it's just a locker kit. It's big. American Adventure Lab has a kit that mounts the twin ARB compressors underneath the driver's seat. And then it has like a port right out underneath the driver's seat, right? And then we're another- We're gonna show you though. Let's, let's do that better. So yeah, we're here at American Adventure Lab where they have all kinds of cool shit for Jeeps and Toyotas and Rams. Yeah. They have all kinds of stuff. That one's actually pretty cool. If you can see that, oh, sorry. There's a like a spare tire carrier that carries like your cooler on top and your action traction devices it's and extra fuel cans. Sad. It's actually pretty fun. See what else they got working on. What are you smelling the metal for, Chris? Put yeah. my nose in it. Okay. <laughs> what you're looking at here is that that demon outside does not have a way to air up those 40s. We've got ARB air lockers and we have a little tiny ARB pump, but it's just an air locker pump that's under the hood that will not fill up the tires. So I've got twin ARBs on the way, but we need a place to mount them. And American Adventure Lab here has a super cool way to mount them under your driver's seat. So this bracket will mount under the driver's seat. The twin pumps go here and then you get this additional bracket here where you can attach your quick disconnect so you'd open your driver door and you can do that and then ah. you have your on off switch right here if you want to do that or you can wire it to to well, the yeah, dash we, as well we, well you wire it to the dash and into this it. Yeah, you, split you split it. it so what's cool is also you're like well that's on the driver's side i'd have to have a super long hose to get to the other side but you don't really because they make a passenger side one and so this would bolt to the passenger side and you just take the hose up and over and just run the hose out here you don't need another compressor right you don't need or, you, or you can do two dual compressors, compressors. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you could. Totally if you could. have the money you can run two dual compressors and boy, you fill up them 40s. This is just a bracket here that bolts to the one seat bolt, but I didn't tell them in time and they didn't have it. So we're just gonna run a whole nother, probably just cut that bracket up. But yeah, that'll be a super trick setup. It's not gonna be getting dirty or sucking in any of the dust uh, from being under the hood or inside the fender well, anything like that, so. It's gonna be sick. All right, well, so now we're back. We got the demon child on the lift, but we got a little bit more to do than we got and wanted to. So Phil Licardi, Shock Jesus, the guy who's tuned all of our stuff, He's actually heading down here from Reno right now because uh, we, we did some tuning and we changed out the pistons out at um, KOH when we were playing around, um, but we couldn't get it quite right. And then Bill Stein was like, oh, we found an issue. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But also, I've got these uh, Fox bumps here in the front and I completely obliterated the right front one. <laughs> so, we, <laughs> so it took us... How long about, did that take us to let get? Let me tell out? you about obliterated. I don't know what the deal is, but these weren't really up to the task. At least uh, then, I don't know. Koh is pretty bad with the whoops, and I was having a lot of fun. This thing's heavy and has a lot of power. I don't know, but it did take us like four hours to pull out a bump stop. Yeah, like it was, I, it, it was, I, it was in there. <laughs> I messed it up pretty bad. It in there. Um, I also destroyed the bump pads, so we have some new bump pads. We've got ARB twin onboard air compressors. That's going to go in there because we need a way to air up and air down, and then. The mount for it, like you just saw earlier from American Adventure Lab, that's gonna go under the driver's seat, and then we'll have a, a hookup for the hose on the driver and passenger side. We should do an oil change too, because Brittany and I are actually driving this from home to EJS, from EJS all the way down to Jeep Beach in Florida, and then from Florida all the way back here to Utah. We wanna take this all around the country and see how it does. I've driven it quite a bit, but not enough, and I don't know, I think it'll do it. They won't be fine. And for people who are wondering about the stepchild. 
Yeah, stepchild's still waiting on a, a transfer case. The adapter to go to the bigger trans and where it sits. I, I don't know all the details in my head, but they're still working on it. Hopefully, we'll have the stepchild running again sometime this year. She's getting new axles. This is also We're also waiting to do it all at one time. Yeah, we have brand new axles, Dynatrack, 6080s, but wide. 72 wide this time instead of the 68 and a half. I think we just need to get working. we got to pull these coilovers off because Phil will be here. and He's driving like 10 hours to retune these and then get back on the road. But uh, right, So first we'll get the coilovers off. Let's do that. So this here is what screws onto the top of that remote resi. You can see low speed compression, high speed compression, 20 clicks, 10 clicks. So that's pretty neat. The fluid flows in and out of this port and there's actually a shim stack here with this piston. I don't know much about it when Phil gets here, maybe he can explain it a little bit better, but these basically clickers allow flow, more flow and less flow. What Bill Stein explained was there was something to do with a hole inside of here, something that wasn't quite right, that wasn't allowing the proper flow. So what's cool is that you can tune the coilovers with the same kind of shim stacks, but you can also tune this. And I'm assuming this is set right, but if not, Phil can also get in here and change these shim stacks as well. So that's what we're doing with those. These guys we need to replace because as you can see, it's like crazy chewed up right there. That's because there used to be a hole in the bottom down here so you can bolt in a bump pad, but we set these up so you didn't need that bump pad and that hole was completely destroying. You can see how it's destroying that pad. So that's no good. So we filled in the hole and then we're just gonna replace these new uh, with new bump pads. And from there, it's just an oil change and getting these twin compressors. This is, this is the way to go. It really has always been the way to go. We've tried other stuff. Haven't had too good of luck, but tried and true. I have never had an issue with our uh, ARB compressors at all. So this one I replaced right before we went out to KOH. So this was brand new. This is what it's supposed to look like. So this got chewed up by the hole, just a little hole in the bottom that you put a bolt in when you put a bump pad on there. That was brand spanking new. And we're gonna replace it with another brand spanking, another brand spanking new one. I don't know, maybe when you were pulling stuff out of the snow? That is uh... I was like, hey Kevin, that's a cool looking vent line. Um, it's melted. It's melted shut, which is why it probably doesn't trip. Oh, up. that's why. Yeah. It's literally melted shut, so it, the locker's <laughs> not leaking. <laughs> well, sick. Do we have a line? Uh, I do. Well, you're putting in the ARB. Oh, well, we have the manifold for it. We could just run the twin pump. Oh, can we just go to my switches? Can we just rewire them to my switches so I can turn them off and on when I decide, not when the Jeep wants to? Yes. Yeah. All right, so these are all out. So I guess I have a bent bolt up front. Are we gonna reuse that or you got a bolt? Oh, uh, we'll just stick it back. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like, Can you see? Can't see it, but it definitely wobbled the shock when I pulled it out. It, the shock went boop, 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 boop. Yeah, you can see it right here. Boop. Right there, it comes off. Off the table, onto the table, off the table. Yep, right there. It's right there, it's bent into the, into the ruler. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Oh, I bent that. Good job, Kevin. I mean, Chris. Yeah. Good job, buddy. All right, so he'll rebuild those. What do you want to do next? Oil change? Do you want to install that after he does all that, or do you want? To, what do you want to do? So this, we'll, we'll start mounting this to the AEL plate. Um, they're just so pretty. They're compact and they work. Oh, I just, I, I like them. You can see we got orange stuff over there. I'm just, I just can't. I'm sorry, guys. I know there's, there's cool companies that are working with those and doing stuff, but I just, it. it can't beat an ARB. You're the wiring guru. This is this is no. you, buddy. I hate it though. But you're so good at it. <laughs> think of it this way. I don't think you have to use it all because you're gonna use the aux one or whatever to just activate it for the on-off switch. Yeah, yeah. So we might have a problem. We might have a little bit of a problem. I have cat skin seats that they replaced all that, and we have the first cooled and heated JL like cat skin seats. And they work great, I love them. But we don't know if there's room taken up under there. So this may not. Hey, 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 it'll, it'll work just fine. Just put spacers under the seat brackets and, <laughs> and raise it. I mean, you're a little short. Hey, I can't even <laughs> pump it all the way up, honestly. It's way too tall. I think it's for somebody who's like five, 
three. All right, so let's see how this works. Do you even know how this works? Did you read any instructions or is it? I don't read the instructions. This goes under the seat. This goes to the back bolt of the seat. Yes. Like the seat's facing that way. This goes to the back bolt of the seat. And this Go goes ahead. in here like this. Because then this goes in here like that. So you don't kick it. And then you can either run these in here or Remote mount. Re no, no, no. There's only a remote mount if you mount them in the back. So if you okay. mount them up front, these just kind of go on here. So those go on here. Wait, is this going to be facing the front of the vehicle? No, or this is, this is the back seat? seat. This is so you can't kick it from the back oh, seat. Oh, so the front of the vehicle is this way. Yes. So it's, oh uh, yeah, it's up under the seat. And so this is when you get somebody gets in the back seat. You can't kick it. Oh, yeah. good job, American Adventure Lab. That's actually yeah. pretty smart. Okay. Pop that guy out, pop this guy in. And you won't be like sucking in dust and everything if you were to like put this under the hood or somewhere. Oh, right, right, right. And then this goes here. And then this one is the one that goes here. Oh. This one. Nope. I was right the first time. That goes there and sticks out the bottom of the seat. And then Wouldn't it go here, on that? This is the if it's the driver's side. Oh, if it's the passenger side, I was thinking. Oh, are we gonna maybe mount it under the passenger well, yeah, seat? Yeah, one of the sides we're gonna mount it under. I wonder if and it'll then, go under either one. It will. This will go under either seat. Oh. It just depends on what side you get this for so this is the passenger one but we have one for each side we have one for each side so we can go to either one so then this is, would be a driver side setup but we have this and side. this so that way what we're going to do is split it and so i can have an air hose out of the passenger side and i can run a hose air hose out of the driver's side i guess we'll just show you once it's yeah, this one once it's done it. okay i got a question for you guys if you're getting in the back seat of somebody's vehicle jeep car whatever what side do you pick? Do you pick sit? Do you, do you sit behind the driver or do you sit behind the passenger? Like, what do you naturally do? Now, like, I guess if you know it's me and Brittany, we're about the same height. We're only an inch difference, but if like Chris is in the passenger seat, you probably sit behind me because he's taller than me. Yeah, I just, I'd naturally sit behind. If I do know you, the driver's shorter, I will usually sit, sit behind, behind the driver. driver. Just, I mean, in any case. I mean, it makes sense, but you actually think that through. You don't just like jump in the car. I pulled, I pulled that guy out. And I think, I think we're just gonna go under the driver's seat. Oh, you know why also? Wow. Because if it's under the passenger seat and you have a passenger a lot of times, it's gonna be vibrating. Like that, those things vibrate like crazy, right? Just so they're just gonna have a butt massage for a while. Brittany probably won mine. Damn it, Chris. I can't find my flashlight. Well, find it. So you know also how we have that new American Adventure Lab drawer system in the Bronco? I need it for all my Jeeps now because this is the kind of stuff that happens. Look like this, this, we've got fire extinguisher. Gloves. Oh, you need these pieces. These are in the back seat. Ah, those are the pieces I was looking for earlier. Oh, well. Thanks. You're welcome. They probably fell out while you were yanking that FedEx truck out of the snow. Bro, they probably slid all around them. Way before this. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I need that drawer system in the back because if you look, there's just crap everywhere and it's really nice to have it back there. Also need to put the roto packs, the three gallon roto packs back here. Okay, so it looks like, it looks like the control box and everything for the heated and cool seats is under the driver's seat. You can see it hanging down right there. Chris is saying that there's not one on his side. There's nothing on this side. So, so we're gonna probably put it over there then. So the only thing I've done to this thing to prep for EJS is I've changed all the fluids. I went through and did the diff, the transfer case, topped off the ATF, just gave it a, a once over to make sure my diffs weren't leaking because um, we did do some water crossings a couple of weeks ago and I just wanted to make sure we didn't have any mud in anything because that would have sucked. So we are going to keep around 35s at least for another probably year before we can get to the actual axle build. So I do rub pretty heavily at the door with these 35s. So the rear axle is uh, the only one that I really didn't mess with, so I didn't push it back. When I built this front axle a couple of years ago, I did push it forward an inch. So as you can see, she's not quite lined up with that spring perch, but I did line that spring perch up on the axle. So the spring perch is offset on the axle and the radius arm brackets are pushed forward. So that works. This back here does not. So what we're gonna do, and as you can see, I've uh, I've hit it and wrinkled it and already pulled the fender flares off. This, I can cut this guy all the way up into here. The door seals all the way up into there, which means I can probably cut this door off right about there. Build a block off plate and, and fill this with another piece. Now these doors are aluminum, which sucks. The inners are steel, the outers are aluminum. Uh, same with the body. This is aluminum, 
this is steel. So we're gonna cut this out too, all the way down this wheel well and build a block off panel. Voila. That worked out pretty well. It looks like I gotta take a little bit more out of here, but I do have quite a bit of room here. So we're probably gonna mark this from the outside maybe. Cause I looked, I do like this. I like, I like this arch. I can't get into there much more because that's where this body line is. So I think what I'm gonna do next is just cut this body line out and uh, we'll go from there. I think when we get done with this, we should get a lot less dirt in there. I hit this all the time. You can see it's black and it's folded over. So we're gonna cut this all off. All right, what I'm gonna do next is, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna cut this and then cut this body line down and cut that off. Ha! <laughs> Success. So much more room. Now for the back. <laughs> So I might be able to just massage this out a little bit, maybe to there. I don't want to suck this in though. And this is aluminum, this is steel, and I was wrong. These are both steel. So this is a steel door, but this is aluminum. So I'm probably gonna make a block off panel. Uh, I don't know, I might open this up more so that I have a nice flange in there to go to. Yeah, no more rubbing now. Um, I'll probably tack it in and then body body it in because I know in the future we're going to get rid of this anyway because I'm going to stretch this wheel well physically. So I'll probably slot it in the middle and physically move this wheel well back 12 inches. Uh, that is the goal in the end. All right, after a little massaging, it doesn't look half bad. The line is really crisp. I don't have too big of a gap to try to fill. That's it. So that's, that's pretty easy. I'll do a little bit of filing down in here. Looks pretty good. But before we move on to the other side, I wanted to show you a little something that I had started already. Um, yes, the front end is pretty ugly. If you remember, I had a gray one, which belonged to a friend of mine, and she had gotten into an accident. So I had given up my headlights for hers and put hers all back together. And then we came up with this. They actually have like an amber halo, which is like the turn signal. They were cool, they're not anymore. But also, headlights are very expensive. So we started mocking up our own. So I was gonna make this bolt that all up in there and get this fit real good. Kind of like the classic Land Rover has a big headlight and then like a little driving light underneath and then a marker and a blinker. So I don't know, we might still do that. We can get the uh, bumper finished off. I never did finish this section of the bumper because I was waiting to get another set of headlights. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty stoked on the way the wheel well is coming out. Just gotta build that panel. I think that's it for tonight. We'll get into it again. And then this weekend, maybe we'll get back into this. Yes. So I did finally get my push rods. I got chromoly push rods in here, but I still have to do uh, the rocker arm adjustments for the big cam that's in here so that we can get this finally completed. Uh, but that'll be this weekend. All right, we're, we're already into this. Phil jumped right in. Phil just drove like 10, 11 hours and he's, it's, it's, it's dark out. He's like, well, let's just jump into it. So we're taking everything apart. If you remember at King of the Hammers, he swapped out to these linear pistons um, and we tried to play with the valving, but we didn't really have the time. And he's jumping right into it, maybe. Hold the tape. Nope, that was very tight. Oh, oh damn. I it. Oh, let's see. Oh, I don't, I mean, this is what you gotta do. This is what happens sometimes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. All right, so it's all apart. We got the new one going in and you're not touching any of the shims on that. I'm just curious when you like, when you would even know. <laughs> like, to me, it's like when, when it's you- it's absolutely not doing anything we want it to do. Cause like, we, <laughs> even with the digressive piston, we had it working pretty dang good. It did, it and, was. And with these clickers and all, it was fine. You know, the linear piston, obviously far more progressive feeling, if you will, or- Right, which is what I want. Yeah. I want it to be soft and supple uh, <laughs> at right height, like a pair of thingies. And then, uh, and then stiff when it, <laughs> and then stiff when we get going hard, fast and hard. As long as, we, uh, as long as the the rebound chims do what we want, I mean the compression side is going to be money. Yeah, so it should be just close to running that and super I, wide open. We would only tighten that down if I was going to really yeah. boogie. So it's not even that much fluid in this whole shock. It should be like a quart. 
anymore. Oh, okay. It was just clear, so it was hard to. Do you guys have nitrogen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I brought mine, but. I don't know how much we have, but. So we're gonna swap to this. I don't know if one's a race fluid and one's a regular. I don't. Who knows? I don't know. Red seems seems like a good idea. Yeah. Oil, one gallon. Perfect. So this is not a short process. It's a little different here because you don't have all your stuff set up, so you just showed up in your truck. But in your home or in your shop or in, in your in your trailer, how long does it take you to usually do something like this for all, all four? four? Yeah. If you don't have to put them on and off, like if they shipped them to you or whatever. Bled to my standards? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> four hours? About four hours to rebuild the four. It takes quite a bit. It's like 11 o'clock at night. We're just kind of hanging out. 10 o'clock at my house. Oh, 10 o'clock. There you go. <laughs> That's why I'm still awake. But God damn, muscle man. There's a little more effort here and there. Yeah. Mostly whiskey. Mostly whiskey. <laughs> whiskey. Oh, I have a little bit more for you. You want me to go fill up your drink? No. No? That one was enough? For now, I'm not done with it yet. Oh. <laughs> I gave him some sailor or sea salt. What was it? Oh, that was Jefferson's Ocean. There you go. <laughs> sailor oh, Ocean. Looking for sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was way easier. Some one was a little hell? heavy with the Loctite on the other one is what it was. <laughs> Phil, it's Liberty Mountain Fabrication. I don't think you can. I don't think. Well, they they wouldn't find you by Phil online. Maybe they would. No, no. Don't find me. It's fine. Don't find. Yeah. <laughs> Liberty Mountain Fab. We we put it on the on the bottom. Liberty Mountain Fabrication. You can find them on Instagram and Facebook and probably Google. But oh, there you go. So if you want them custom tuned or you want them rebuilt or especially he likes race car stuff. You don't really like Jeep stuff much, I huh? Jeep stuff, really. Oh, do you? Oh, I'll well, see. So race car it's a lot easier to pe uh, appease you guys. Right? Yeah. Race car people are picky. <laughs> Dang, it almost is exactly three hours later. Didn't I say four hours ago? You did say so four I'm hours. Bleeding that jerk and then we're dead. <laughs> he was telling me it's a pain in the arse to bleed the click, the ones that have the clickers because there's air, there's places for the air to get trapped. So a lot of this has been shaft, 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 shaft stroking. Here's you gotta experience. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the rears, we have the rears already back on. Um, now I'm not running sway bars front or rear because it was limiting my flex. And we turned out that there was a one inch front and a one inch rear thickness, like working thickness, uh, sway bars. And that was way too much. So I ordered some smaller, uh, a smaller sway bar and it was supposed to be here today. I paid for three day shipping and it did not show up. So it's going to kind of throw a, maybe a little wrench in the tuning, but we're going to just do what we can. And you're hoping it's going to show up tomorrow, right? Hoping it shows up. Because today's a Monday and I ordered on Wednesday and paid for three day shipping. So yeah, that's how things go these days. Yeah. You guys have been very good. Actually, our FedEx guy's really good. Especially FedEx Chris, guy is Chris is awesome. over here rump ripping his bumper off. His. He I used this demon. I love our FedEx guy. Yeah. He is, he is great. All right. And this is going to be Chris's new toy. He needs to buy one of these. I need to buy one. I am so yeah. excited right now. Yeah. I still hate it. I still hate it. Look at that. One handed. I know. One handed. He's done this once or twice. There it is. Oh Trigger God! What? 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 Yeah. You just hang tight. <laughs> I'm glad I'm getting this. <laughs> He's got it. There we go. He's got it. We don't need to lose any fingers. <laughs> it's late evening. <laughs> I saw that look like a flesh. Chocolate. Yeah, it was like all these, all these fingers and hands and arms showed up. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta so we did put another inch of preload in this because we wanted to raise the front up because it was too close. Well, right now it's not. This is this is too close. The bump stop is too close to the bump pad um, way too often. And so we wanted to raise it up a little bit. That'll that'll help let the shock do its work uh, before the, the, the bump gets in the way. This is what he's got to do. He's got to sit here and work all the bubbles out for hours and hours. That one's been at it for a while too. Yeah. We let it sit, but it's dusty and dirty. We don't want to get in the in the oil. So as soon as this is done, we'll go to bed and start tomorrow. Yes. All right, well, yeah, good morning, guys. It's the next morning, and we just took the demon out, and it feels so much better. The rear still has... My, my kidneys still function. The rears, yeah, the rear still have a little stiffness to it. We're still saying that everything's moving right, but it does, there is, there's a, a, still a harshness. The front feels great. Also, the front, we raised another inch, and uh, that's, let me show you this. The reason we raised the front was to get some more space between the bump stop and uh, the strike pad there. And as you can see there, that is, that is a nice amount of distance. That's more what you wanna see. Um, I see a lot of people running these bump stops like 
half inch, inch, half inch right off the pad. And that just, you're just gonna crash into this all the time. That's gonna make it harsh. She's sitting a little higher. I don't think it looks bad at all. It doesn't look like it's too high or anything, but got plenty of space there now. So that's great. Feels good. We're gonna leave the front alone, but the rear, he wants to work on the rear more. Um, and so what he wants to do is, Phil wants to get into these guys. We're gonna pull these guys apart, these old ones that we pulled off and see what's going on. Cause there is a shim stack right there. So we might see what we can do there, pull the rears apart. Also, yay, my anti-gravity battery showed up for the Demon. Although it already has one because I stole, <laughs> cause I stole it off the stepchild. So this thing has a draw. We don't know why it has a draw. Chris and I have kind of looked at it. Haven't really had time to diagnose it, but this thing kills a battery in about four days. Talked to anti-gravity, had to get another battery. So we stole the stepchild battery because the stepchild's been down for months. Threw it in here and it took about, probably about eight days. Instead of three or four on the EGM battery, it took about eight days and it killed it. But I didn't have to jumpstart it because this baby has this button right here. So it goes to sleep and when, it, when the uh, voltage gets down to a certain point, you come over and you hit this button and it turns on or you have these little remotes that you can keep inside the vehicle. Super sick. So I do still carry a jump box just in case. And also I carry a jump box more for other people than for me. But this thing being this freaking light and having that, I literally walked out to the demon. I was like, ah, oh, it's dead. Cause we were gone to the Arctic. Came back, literally just hit the button and it fired it right up. I didn't even think about it. I should have filmed it. And uh, there's some other stuff they wanted me to talk to you guys about. And I'm gonna go through that in a little bit because people last time when we installed it in the Ferrari and the stepchild, People were talking about how it, in the extreme heat they don't work and then extreme cold they don't work, which isn't true. Uh, maybe some people's don't, I don't know for sure. They've been testing these in like Northern Wisconsin, Northern Michigan, Canada, where it's like negative 20, negative 30 degrees with zero issue. And I kind of wish I would have had one for the Bronco for that whole trip to actually do it myself. 10 to 11 year lifespan, jump box built in, and it handles the extreme cold and extreme heat. So it's it's kind of my new favorite thing. We need one for her Supra. We need one for the side-by-sides. Like we gotta have to put it on everything now. Now some things to note really quickly. You do not want to use a lead acid charger on the battery. So you don't want to take a big battery charger. If this is dead, somehow you killed it or you want to charge it, You it can't be a lead acid. And then it does show you exactly do not, or use only the 12.8 uh, volt. Lipo for lithium specific chargers. Do not short circuit the battery. Yeah, you don't want to do that. And then it talks, tells you about your restart feature. So this thing really, the, the biggest thing at first was the weight savings. That was simply awesome. And then the restart feature being built in is also super awesome. And then everybody was, they're not everybody. Lots of people were like, oh, those don't work in cold. They don't work in cold. They do work in cold. They work just fine in cold. I'm going to go through the email and find out exactly what he was talking about so we can show that, but, or I can talk about that. So this needs to go on the stepchild, but either way, pretty much everything I own is getting these things because they're freaking awesome and not having to worry about a battery for like 10, 11 years will be amazing. All right, so we're back at it. Back apart, uh, we're gonna do a little bit more valving. One more valving run and then throw it on and see what happens. Yep. So we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get into the clicker side yet. Not yet. So we were looking at it and figured out how all that worked. <laughs> it's, it's interesting and cool, but we shouldn't have to get in there, but. We're going back to doing a lot of work. Well, yeah, because if you change that, then you have to change. Full, well, full breakdown all the way right. down to zero again for the long, long bleed process. But like, if you have to do it, you have to do it. Yeah. Right, but but does that, you know, if we change the, the whole clicker set up that manifold, we change the shims in there, do you have to then probably go back to changing the, the regular piston? In theory, we would. All right, revalve, put back on. So like I said, we're not getting into the, the manifold stacks yet. We just went super light on the rebound, a little bit lighter on the compression. We're hoping it's perfect, but if, if anything, we're hoping it's too much rebound, so at least we know, but then we'll know because the back end will just top out the rear and then we'll know we can slow it down some, but let's hope this is it. All right, it is absolutely beautiful now. Literally floats over the cattle guard that used to buck me. It's amazing. Sorry we don't have outside footage of it, because we're just trying to get it done. He literally drove like 10 and a half hours down last night, did it today, and now he's like literally loading up and heading home. So <laughs> Liberty Mountain Fab, yes, if you need anything like that shot. And you also sell all kinds of shocks. If ADS and Radflow and King and Fox and- Bill Stein. And Bill Stein. <laughs> like he literally can get a hold of all of it and get you a deal on stuff. So yes, I'm plugging him because he's freaking awesome. Um, our tuning is done though, not only because is he done and everything's great, but also because uh, we started hearing a noise. I hammered on this thing pretty good out at King of the Hammers. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this rear track bar bracket is cracked. 
All the way around. You can see it right there. And then it's also cracked right there. So don't know, I guess I put too much stress on it. It's a pretty heavy vehicle. I was going through the whoops pretty freaking gnarly. Chris is gonna have to grind all that down, weld it all back up, and then probably plate it right here. He'll have to probably run a plate from here yeah. up onto the frame to basically box that in completely. All right, back to the ARBs and the American Adventure Lab. So there's it installed. And you just mount this on the plate. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Put the fitting in it, run one line around, and then there'll be a T on this side, which I'll show you in a minute. And then and the long the steel line. Steel braided line goes under. Yes. You take these two tens out. Yeah, so I was gonna show. So you wanna take these two tens out. There's one here, one on the other side. And you can just It'll, yank this up. You wanna do it or not? We're gonna lift. No, it's fine. So we'll lift this guy, we'll lift the back of that up. And then I took this stainless steel line and I fed it right under there. I just kept like playing around, feeding it while Chris was on the other side until he felt it. We pulled it through. We tried to come over here and around, but it wasn't long enough, so you do have to go that way with it. And so that line will sit right there with the connection. And, and then it'll go over here to the T on this side, which I'll yep. show you in a second. All right, so Chris has almost finished the install. We have a switch on both sides for the for the whole uh, to air up to, to both turn the compressor on so I can turn it on and off from either side. And that's pretty slick. That's that's super hidden. Have Brittany come out. Hey babe. Go ahead and jump in the passenger seat for me. Go ahead and jump. Is the compressor underneath my seat? You put the compressor in my freaking. I didn't want it under my seat. <laughs> <clears throat> Thought this kind of content was supposed to go on a different <laughs> kind of website. You're only fans. I'm only fans. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is a fantastic modification if you have a wife or girlfriend that you want to come jeeping with you. Your wife doesn't want to go off roading with you? <laughs> okay, she thinks it's gonna be. That's more of a massage. It's tingly. <laughs> Peanut doesn't like it. <laughs> I like it. I think it's a good modification. But we can air up tires now, so but that's then good. It does... Ooh. Like it builds up. It has up. multiple settings. <laughs> <laughs> So you can that's, that's, that's your OnlyFans content, not YouTube. All right, new night. And we're gonna get the bottom of these doors filled in so that we don't put water and stuff inside the doors. So basically started with a strip of paper, traced it out, and then cut it out of some steel. So now we're gonna form this form of the door here. So we're gonna bend this up, get this taped up. I gotta cut the back of it, but I wanted to make sure that uh, the front side was lined up first so that we didn't cut too much of it out. Form it into the bottom of this door and uh, see how much of that we actually gotta cut off. So these ones are farther apart because it's much straighter up here before it starts to curve down. Make sure we bend these the right way because I need to bend those that way. And then we'll start to roll it and see what it looks like. God, I hope this works. the bomber when we sold it the person that we sold it to had his own wheel and tire package so he didn't want what we had so ta-da we have the six lug wheels off of the race car so then i got some nitto 35s wrapped them in these 17s bead locks off the race car so uh that meant that i had to change feeds from five lug to six lug she did have adapters on her before because this is five by 120 and the only thing that really fits on here is like bmw wheels and they're not readily available so i converted it to a jeep pattern and that's why i'm running jeep five on four and a half or whatever this is uh, Jeep wheels and they're 18s and honestly, I hate these tires. We're not going to go into that They're great if you're gonna not gonna wheel other than that. They're super duper heavy um, Along with the 18s and finding tires for 18s is pretty hard So we get on eBay and you just find five lug to six lug adapters and I was starting to get ahead of myself Oh and this, this showed up in the box. Steps to Jesus. So let's get these installed. I was starting to get ahead of myself because I was getting super excited and I figured uh, I should probably film it. So we're gonna knock those adapters off, put those adapters on, put those wheels on. <laughs> All right.
right, and there they are. They are hub centric on the inside. The outsides are not. Um, they'll make it through this event. I also have the Apex Speed bleeders. Uh, these things are sweet. Definitely get yourself a set of those. We have them on all of our vehicles. So now, Phoebes is on the Nittos, finally. All right, we got them all on. It doesn't poke any more than it did before because it has the same size spacers and the wheel offset is the same. So they don't stick out any more than they did. Yeah, she looks great. So hopefully she works really well. And again, I'm not going out to beat this thing up. I really am just going to camp and enjoy the scenery and get out to where, just enjoy the, the trip. Probably do a little bit of camping. Um, I'm gonna go out by myself and go hang out in the middle of the desert at night. And I do have a radiator I have to put in Phoebe still, um, a new fan switch, and I'm gonna try to do something with these headlights before I get out there. But um, again, I'll keep you posted and um, I'm gonna call it a night. We'll be back out here tomorrow to finish that because that thing looks sick. Kevin, how's your teeth? I'm known from my, on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> I want to laugh you guys. I don't know why you give me any laugh you guys. I'd rather that than feel like this. I can't. Do you want to punch me in my jaw? Oh, <laughs> free, free punches. Yeah, free punches. <laughs> Trying to drink right now, you're just like, I, I was in the gym, I hit the water, because I didn't bring my water. You hit me, I'm trying to drink, and it's just like falling out of my mouth. <laughs> and it says right there, do not spit in the... In the <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not spitting, I just don't know where my mouth is. <laughs> so, Kelly went to the dentist this morning, yeah. semi sort of out of commission, you know, no heavy lifting or whatever. So. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Can't um, my Can't crunch down. Yeah, right. So Beck and I are gonna finish the demon. We only got a couple things left to do. Beck's gonna get that track bar all welded up and the sway bar in and the oil change. Well, she won't do all of that. I will help with some of that. And we're gonna raise the rear three quarters of an inch, I think he said. So that's all we got left to do today. So let's get this track bar fixed. All right, so we got a better look at this track bar bracket you can see she starts all the way down here and it's cracked all the way up and around the frame so there's quite a bit of stress in here so we're gonna get this all ground out of here and then beck's gonna weld that guy up and we're probably gonna plate the inside up to the inside of the frame uh, to give it some more structure for now uh we'll do a complete so jump it. yeah so we can jump it we'll get that cleaned up and then Kevin wants to talk to you about sway bars there was a one inch bar in the front and a one inch bar in the rear and that was severely limiting flex because yeah that's that's one inch bar front and rear now it'd be different if this was like a gladiator and had a rooftop tent and stuff over the back and you were carrying a tray like all this weight this thing i've been running with no sway bars and you can't even really tell uh, but now that we did the shock tuning and we softened everything up it's a bit more sway so i ordered a replacement uh three quarter inch bar actually 0.85 but you can see the difference in... Can you easily see the difference on the video? But anyway, I'm only going to run a rear for now on this 0.85. I may eventually go with like a 0.75 front, which is kind of is what I have on the stepchild. But anyway, we're going to just throw that boy in there. And uh, hopefully, hopefully that works out. Then we should be good to go. The reason also, part of the... I think part of the reason is these Terraflex arms, um, there's not any misalignment to them. And so it's just like bound all the time. And so the suspension doesn't really, it's good for on-road, but for like any severe off-road, it, it binds up instantly. And so it's not really what I would, uh, what I'd use for hardcore off-roading, but it's great for on-road and some off-road, I guess. This is how you drain your oil <laughs> without getting it all over everything. You make a little, well, the filter. A little viaduct. Yeah, a little filter. <laughs> Cause I hate cleaning all the suspension arms off after you're done. Um, I've heard of the Dixie cup. This works too. And that's how you do it without getting it all over the place. So Beck got all that cleaned up. So we got everything protected. We got everything wrapped up. I just grinded off a little bit of paint and stuff on the ground. But Beck's gonna sit down here and do what she do. Meanwhile, Kevin had to just had to put the sway bar in, so I gotta protect that. <laughs> <laughs> and we got the oil changed. And Kevin may or may not have Me. spilled a little bit. Beck's gonna get this welded up. We're gonna give it a couple shots of paint and uh, we'll be done. All right, so Beck got that all welded up, triple pass. And uh, we, I just sprayed it and I forgot to film it, but it looked so sick. So now all we gotta do is raise this side up an inch, put a wheel back on it and uh, she done. Set her down. Yeah. Demon's gone. Demon's gone. Uh, everything's done. I don't think we have anything left to do. We got one more thing left to do. What? Pack them. Load. Oh, we do have to load. And then we have to get in them. 
and, and drive. And then we have to drive. Up. Put gas in them like fifty times. Only you. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so Be- Beck's Jeep is done. Thebes, That's the rover. Think of her name. Thebes, Thebes the rover. is done, and uh, and the demon is done. Yeah, I took it, dude. It rides so good. I'm not gonna name any names. I've ridden a lot of Jeeps, JLs, and coilovers. They've all ridden very kind of like that did before Phil touched it. Just too stiff. Just too, too not anyway. Too not good. It's freaking amazing. If your Jeep <laughs> rides stiff and you want it to ride better, hit up Phil, uh, Liberty Mountain Fabrication. It's it's mind blowing difference. Um, it's better to have him in person or go mm-hmm. to him because otherwise you're mailing him and then he doesn't. He know. doesn't know what he needs. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, we revalved it tw- twice. Three times. Well, three times. Three but times the first total. time was because they had the wrong cans on it, and it really didn't help, and it had yeah. the wrong valves and things. So we, we did go through it three times, but it's it's phenomenal. Like I, there's a great out there, Cattle Guard, and I used to hit it, and the front would go over, and the back would just like, just it, it felt like the that. one the one that <laughs> Beck and I had, like took the mini truck over, and like we launched yeah. it, and like she hit her head and on the now ceiling. You don't even know that you went over it; it just goes bloop. You're like. Sick. Not, anyway, not in the mini truck. We'll be out at EJS <laughs> all week. Um, you guys are going to be at, you're going to have the, uh, the yeah, LJ yeah, yeah. where? It'll be at Magnus Rock, Rock Crawler, Crawler on Thursday and Magnus we'll on Friday. Friday. Yep. There you go. And we're, Brittany and I will just be floating around. We're not doing anything like specific. So. so catch us in Moab. We'll see us there. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Light Bright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. And we'll see you later. <laughs> 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 <laughs>